Today I want to talk with you something that was really life-changing for me. When I learn about this, it makes such a difference in my life. And I want to share this with you. I want to start, I want to talk today about making good choices, right? Uh, I believe that all of us want to do good choices, the right decisions, right? No one want to do it wrongly. But that's not what happens usually. Uh, I'm going to start today reading a quote from a book. The book's called Great Decisions, Few Regrets. And I want to listen to this. Life is all about decision making. Every day. Multiple times a day. Sometimes we're sure, sometimes we're unsure. Some of us are quick to decide, other of us can't ever get enough information to make a decision. But in the end, we are where we are because of decisions we made. Our futures will be determined by our decisions as well. Your decisions, my decisions, along with your responses to other people's decisions, which are also your decision are about the only thing you can control in life, which means your decisions are how you control your life. Decisions are your steering wheel, your joystick, your keypad, which means your decisions determine your story. Unless a tragedy happens, usually in our life, the decisions we make along our lives Tell our stories. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. Uh, I know that some of us, I include myself on this, during our life had made wrong decisions, the consequences are not good, and I cannot come back on time. But I can learn a lesson and do it right from now on. But the good part is we have Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit who with us makes things easier, even dealing with the consequences of our wrong decision in the past. But we can learn and make good decisions from now on. I want to read something, talk about a guy. Uh, I'm reading the Bible now. I'm on Book of Kings, so automatically folks on there, right? But I start listening to this, or want to listen to You listen to this. Choices. In the book of Deuteronomy, God says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. God give us free will to make choices. What about we learn how to do the good ones, right? There's a guy in the book of Kings that everybody knows him, King Solomon, right? I don't know if that's him. That's just a picture I got it. <laughs> I don't think it is because it says that he was very handsome and this guy is ugly, <laughs> right? But okay. You know, King Solomon was the richest man in the world. They say that no one could count how how much money and gold and power and everything that a guy had. Solomon was very handsome, they say. I'd like to be very rich and handsome because I'm just handsome. <laughs> right? He was the wiser than any other man, the scripture says. His wisdom was beyond understanding. Mine is not that good. He had a good father example. His father was the greatest king of Israel. His father is called, you know, the guy who has the heart that pleased the Lord. God made huge promises through David. So Solomon had a very good example of a man who loves God. He himself had a good experience with God. God came and talked to him twice, but you know, God and him 
Wow. So he had all of this. Very rich, very handsome, wise, good example, experience with God. He has everything to succeed. However, he failed. Do you know that? Do you know that Solomon failed? Maybe you guys don't, but he did. I'm going to read a part of the scripture of the consequence of his choices. Because God told him, hey, just keep with me, okay? Just obey me. I give you everything. But live to glorify me like your father did. Obey me. But then, on Kings 10, the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I command you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Wow. Because you did not follow me, I'm going to end with everything I have given to you. You know, this is pretty bad. How can we make good choices? Maybe we are very well prepared, a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience. We have everything. And every day, we have to make choices. You know, some of them are very big. I usually talk to my kids that I learned that are three big decisions in our life. First, when we decide to follow Jesus Christ, to become a Christian. Second big decision, what I'm going to do in my life as a professional what I'm going to do in a college, what I'm going to do, what's going, what I'm going to be as a professional. Third, to whom I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get engaged. Because these three decisions is for the rest of my life. <laughs> right? So it's better I really make these choices very well. Because it will really be with me. But not only big choices, big decisions. Every day we have to make decisions. The simple way you talk to your son, your daughter, yelling to them, what they're going to learn. Your decisions impact not only your life, but all the surrounding, other lives too. The way you treat your wife or the way you treat your husband, like uh, how you call him. Are you rude? What is, you know, a son that sees a father being rude to a mother, Every day, fighting, yelling, being aggressive. What examples that kid is having? You know, you do not have a good, every time you get angry and you just get angry to your kid, so you do not have a good relationship with your son and it's his fault. And not only that, about work, the way you treat your co-workers, Right? People in the church, the way you decided to do just the small things. But every day, you have to make a decision. Sometimes just to have a lunch outside. Oh, I want to go to that restaurant. Oh, my friends are going there. Well, I have a family of four. <laughs> Can I afford them, four of them eating in their restaurant? No, not this month. Only next month. So I will decide, guys, thank you, but I'm not coming this month. Next time I'll be with you. It's more decisions. But it will affect me. But in the end is, how can we make good decisions? How can we make good choices? I learned a few steps. I don't like this kind of five step to this, ten step to that. But this one really worked on me. You know? I have, I have to confess, this is really good. And once I learned this, and, and years ago, when I start putting this in practice... Wow, it makes my life much easier. Much, much easier. If you learn this with me today, and you put this in practice, I'm sure 
your decisions are a great chance to be very good. So your life story will be much better. Five steps we should keep in mind every time we had to make decisions. The integrity question. I love this. Am I being honest with myself? You know, the easiest person for you to deceive is in the mirror. How is it easy for us to deceive ourselves? We convince ourselves of something because we just want to do it. So when I'm making something, am I really being honest with me? What are the reasons I want to do that? You know? This is something very important. I, I remember like a, sometimes it just, it's more than like I have a car, and then all of a sudden I want to buy a new car. So I start convincing myself that my car is not good enough. You know, I'm listening to some noise and uh, my car is getting old. It will cost me so much to fix it. It's time for me to buy a new car. And I convince myself. But am I being honest with me? You know, uh, everything we want to do. Like, <laughs> it's interesting. I remember, and I have seen this a lot in the church, and I remember myself in the beginning of my Christianity, I used to do that. I, during the week... I'm going to have a, a, to make a deal with a big client or something like that. So on that Sunday, I come to church, and during the week, I'm an angel. You know, I'm a really perfect guy. Because, you know, on Thursday, I have a meeting, and I need the blessing of the Lord on that day. So I'm really going to be good, right? I think that God is just laughing, like, man, I don't trade. <laughs> and, and this is big, because I have met so many people coming to church. Serving at the church. Because at the end, they just want to receive something from God. They are expecting something to happen in their lives. So they make a kind of a deal. So they come and start serving at the church. Waiting for God to give the trade. But God doesn't. You know what happened? I have seen so many times, guys, remember, believe me. You know, there's a time that they stop. Because they deceive themselves. The reason they were doing that, and now the other reason why they are leaving. So, you cannot deceive yourself. It has to be honest with you when you make a decision. Why are you doing that? Be truthful with you. This is a very important step. You know, uh, another one. I put here the conscious question, but this is the third one. The legacy question. That's not here. I, miss, I misplaced it. Sorry. The legacy question is, what story do I want to tell? What is going to be my life to be? What I want are my kids talk about me. What I want are my grandsons, granddaughters talk about me. What I want are the church talk about me. What are the people talk about me? What is the legacy I want to live? What, what is the story I want to write? This legacy is so important because, you know, sometimes you're having some kind of small issues with your wife and you think you have reason enough to tell some truths, to be rude, or to turn your back, or even to betray. But then you stop and think, no, this is not the story I want to write. I want to write a story in my life with a great family, with a great wife, a great relationship with my wife, with my kids. So it's better now I do right choices regarding my kids, my wife, even if I think that I, I have reasons enough to do differently. My decisions write, my decisions write my story. So what is the legacy you want to leave? Good. You know, so we have two points now. First, why am I deciding this? Truth. Second, what is the story 
I want to write. Third, the conscience question. Now it is. Is there attention that deserves my attention? You know when you're going to do something, and you get there, and you just feel something that you shouldn't. <laughs> but even though, what do you do? You make it. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I felt, you know, I was listening a voice, I was listening something that I shouldn't have done, but I did it. What is going around? Is there any tension around me that is putting me pressure to make a decision? You know, what I usually share with my boys at home is like, first, don't ever make a decision if you're angry. If you are angry, if you're nervous, if you're under pressure, don't make a decision. Stop. Go out. Breathe. Think. And then you take a decision. Every time you decide something, under pressure, the chance of doing wrong is too big. So, is there any tension around? Right? Sometimes, just waiting so good. I have a deal with my son. I like to use them as example, but... I have a deal with them. So they have their money, and sometimes they want to buy their video games, right? Their games on uh, Xbox. So I have one deal. When you really want to buy a game, and it's there, right there, the price you want to pay, you have the money, you really want it, is that right to buy? Yes. Okay, so wait one day, 24 hours. Come on. And then you think. The next day, if you still want it, and you can buy it, do it. You know what happened? A lot of times, they say, you know, it was just a timing thing. I don't want to spend my money on that game. Good. You're learning how to buy games. No, you're learning how to control your decisions. To not make them under the pressure of the moment. Right? So this is very important. Is there anything around me that I should pay more attention? For example... We husbands, our wife, are on that day, on those days. You cannot even touch it, right? <laughs> ah, right? So, well, should I expect everything smooth and sweet on that day? No. <laughs> if I already know that, it's going to be much easier for me when I... Uh, I received some answer or, you know, someone poking me. But there's something surrounding. There's something I have to pay attention to make my decisions. What are the, what, what are the pressures coming? You know, so now we have three. I cannot deceive myself. <laughs> you know, what is the second, guys? Legacy. The legacy, what is the story I want to write? Sir, third, what is the third? The conscience. What is around me? And then I go for the fourth, the maturity question. I love this. What is the wise thing to do? Sometimes, a lot of time, the wise thing to do is not what I want to do. And this is hard. Because I really want to do something, but the why thing is not do it. I'm going to share something with you. Me and my wife, uh, we, for years, uh, we have been willing to buy a, a trailer, a travel trailer. To enjoy time with my boys, right? And then, a few weeks ago, we were almost buying one. But then, you know, I just felt in my heart, God telling me, hey, not time now. Don't do it. And then Grace came to me another day. You know, Alex, God came to me in a dream and told me that's not time. I said, okay, God, you are very clear with us. But I want it. But okay, this is not the right thing to do. So let's try to make it next year. Right? Sometimes the right thing to do is not the right thing to do. What is not what we want to do. You know, another lesson that I learned from my father and I also share with my family is 
Sometimes you have to do things that you don't want. But that's the right thing to do. Try to find something good on that. If you don't find, create something. <laughs> but try to get something good on that. Grab it with all your strength. Look at that and go and do it. It's going to be much easier than you go complaining. I don't want to do it. I have to do it. You have to do it. So try to find something good on that. And sometimes the wise decision we can find on a story of a friend, well, he did that, and that's what happened. We can find it on the scriptures. We can find it in our prayer moments. I can tell, guys, that the Holy Spirit, if you go there, you fast and pray, and you ask him to give you wisdom to make a decision, he will put something in your heart. But then you have to decide, do I want to follow it? Or just want to do what I want because I have the right to do it. It's my life. Well, every decision brings a consequence. But you know, we went to four steps. But the fifth one is what got Solomon. That was the missing part. And when this fifth step is missing, probably all the others will fail. It's very important, all of this, because we're talking about the decisions we're making to our life. Right? Our life. The relationship question. What does God require from me? What does God want me to do? What is God expecting me to do? Probably you have heard this, that God has a plan for your life. That's awesome. God has a plan for my life. Yeah, but I think his plan is not so good because my life is pretty a mess. No, his plan is good, but are you living it? Are you enjoying his plan? When God has a plan for my life and yours, the point is, what I'm doing is for his glory. John 14, 13, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. All my actions, all my decisions will glorify the Lord. Everything you do is glorifying the Lord. When you decided to do something or to stop doing something, that action is glorifying the Lord. Or you are deceiving yourself or it's just selfish decision. Guys, I have to remind you that Christianity is having our life bought by the blood, paid by the blood of Jesus, bought by him. We do not own our life anymore. He does. There is no room for selfishness. Everything, me and you, everything we do should be for the glory of the Lord. So God, because God wants good for me and you. So why am I doing this? Is this action glorifying him? Or, or it's just me, just about me, about what I want. Because then, you, you know, you have to deal with it. God, God put something in your heart. God gave you a gift. God prepared you to, to do something for him in your life. And you deny that? You know the place. There, there's a place there's a, that is full, full of gifts. Where you go there, where you can find tons of gifts by the Holy Spirit. You know where it is? Cemetery. 
A lot of people die with the gift inside of them and they never use. Because they're never willing to. You know, what kind of Christianity are you living? First Corinthians 10, 31. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's what was the missing part for Solomon. He thought he had everything. And he didn't have to glorify the Lord anymore. That was the missing part. What are you doing with your life? With the decisions you make? What are you doing with the gift he gave to you? You know, I, 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 guys, I'm not as old as Pastor Tim, right? And on a good sense, an experienced sense. Like, a, but I have seen... Hundreds of the same situation, and probably he has seen thousands, is people come to church, come to become a Christian, because they need something from God. They do not realize that, in truth, everything they need, they have already received, is the reconnection, is salvation. No, that's not enough. I, I, I want to be a Christian because I, I, I want to be blessed in my work. I want to have this. I want to have that. And then time comes and I do not receive that because that was not the plan of the Lord. It was my plan. And then I decided to stop being a Christian. I decided to look for in another religion. I like to see the power of God flow in another place. Because I'm not seeing the power of God, No. You're not seeing the power of God according to what you want to happen to your life. Because I can tell the power of God is flowing. He's still working even when you don't see it. So what is the reason you are a Christian? If you are a Christian for trade, I can tell you, sorry guys, I will not meet you in heaven because you don't know, understand. You do not understand what a Christian means. Make good choices. Your decision today is write your tomorrow's story. I'd like to invite our worship team. What I want you to realize, you that's watching us online and you here in the church, is how important is the decisions you make? How it impacts your life? Every day, since the moment you wake up, you make decisions to the time you lay your head on your pillow. If you have enough, because the Holy Spirit gives us, you know, the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians tells that one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. So with him and we have him, we can have self-control. Self-control to wait, to listen. To be truthful, to understand the impact of that decision and make it right. I'm going to do this because this is the right thing to do. But if I do not consider these steps I share with you, and once I learned this, I have learned this years ago, and then when I read the book, it will remind me of all these details. I said, oh man, so good to remind it. But it has helped me so much. I still make wrong, I do. <laughs> I, I still do the wrong ones. But man, I can tell that it's much easier to make the right ones once you stop and follow this. These five steps. Do not deceive yourself. You know? Legacy. Right? Uh, oh, I just forgot right here. Let's come back there. Conscience, integrity, and relationship. Right? Keep this in mind. You know why? Because when you leave this church, you have to make decisions. <laughs> Small ones, or maybe big ones. But you have to. Apply this to your life. And believe me, it will be much easier to write your good story, your good life story. 
I'd like to invite you to stand up and like to pray with you while I have a background sound. Thank you, Brad. Oh, Lord. While I'm praying with you, I also want you to talk to the Holy Spirit. Talk from the bottom of your heart because he knows your heart much deeper than you do. Lord, here is my brothers and sisters. I have learned, Lord, from you how important is the decisions I make all the time. But sometimes I feel like I'm not prepared to prepare for them. And I believe that my brothers and sisters feel the same. But we know that with you, we can find everything we need to control ourselves, to be truthful to us, to be able to understand the impact of our decisions, to look around us, what's going around us, and to glorify you with our, with our actions. I ask you, Lord, that you, Holy Spirit, be with each one of us here and online at home, talking to us, to our heart, helping us, empowering us to make good decisions to write our life story. Help us to deal with the wrong ones we have done. But from that decision, I, I can make others to make things easier. Help us to do that. Help us, Lord, to live a worthy life, a life that glorifies your name. I bless my brothers and sisters. I bless this church. I bless each one that's watching us online. That you are with us. So we have everything we need. And may we be diligent to apply these teachings to our daily lives. I bless you in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord. Know the name. Kingdoms rise and fall. There is still one king reigning over all. So I will not fear, for this truth remains that my God is the ancient. Oh, 
the Savior King, there my joy complete, standing face to face in the presence of the ancient of days. You know, as we sing that song, I'm reminded of what I did 50 years ago. You didn't think I was that old, did you? I made the best decision in my life and I invited Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life. And I'll tell you, I really didn't know what that meant when I did it. I had no clue where Jesus was going to take me and what was going to happen in my world. But I can tell you today, I'm just, I'm undone this morning. Just realizing that how important our decisions are and how important that decision was for me. That Jesus came into my life. <laughs> and, if, and if those of you who are watching online, and if you're in this room today and you've never made a personal commitment, say, Jesus said those words come into my life i give you authority in my life permission god will never force his will on you because he loves you love never forces his will on another person but when i give myself unreservedly in love to someone else a whole vestue of of relationship opens up and and if we will open up our heart to the God of love and and allow him to come and have access into our life I'll tell you it will never be the same oh I, I, I got problems I got stress and difficulties in my life but I can tell you the underlying uh, the undergirding, the, the foundational element in my life is this. Jesus is in my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. And all the other decisions are easier and falls into place. And so I'm gonna, we're going to sing again here the salvation, the ancient of days. You see, you know, the, 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 the heavenly father, the the, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the, the God of the universe, the, the Creator the wants to come and live in us. And, and I'm going to kind of be kind of bold. If you want to slip out of your seat as we sing and just come to the front here as a testimony, as, as, a, as, a, as a, a physical act of saying, Jesus, I want to invite you into my life. You don't have to understand it at this point. God will show you and reveal to you all that He is and wants to be in your life. Would you do that this morning as we sing? And if you just want to recommit your life to Christ this morning and say, you know what, I'm going to make my decisions in line with you today. Why don't you do that today? We're just going to dismiss you. Uh, you can go your way at this point. But those who want to just have a deeper connection with God, or those of you online, just say, type in in the comment section, uh, I want to have that commitment. I want to make that commitment. Would you do that this morning? Yeah, just come. Just don't be shy. If you want to come, come. You know, come on. Let's sing. Come on. It's okay. Let's make it to the, for the Lord this morning. Angels rise and fall. Come. There is this is the best decision you can make. Reigning over all. Oh, so yes. Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus. For this truth Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on. Come on. Make that decision today. The best one. The most important one. Oh, Jesus. His hands, for his throne it shall remain oh, and ever stand. All the power, all the glory, I will trust in his name. For my God is the ancient of He is.
God, I still got the mic. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence, your blessing, for your love. I bless each one of you guys today that this week is going to be a great week, full of his presence. The blessings of the Lord will run after you because with every action you will be glorifying him. And next Sunday, when we meet ourselves here, you will have a lot of testimonies to share with us how your life was good and now is even better and how your week was amazing. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.